Welcome to today's session. My name is Gus Chavira, and I am a solutions architect with Dell Technologies in the MCSG Engineering Group. Today, I'm going to walk you through a few things I want you to take, take away with modern workforce solutions. First, we're going to talk a little bit about how do we start the life cycle of a PC. Dell Factory and Connected Provisioning are offers that help you get devices to end users quickly and accurately. And then we're going to talk a little bit about some examples of outcomes from our modern workforce solutions and how we support your device lifecycle. And then lastly, we're going to talk about Dell PC value adds. So what is the differentiation of Dell devices in Workspace ONE, for example? And then I'm going to end with how do you consume all this up in an as a service bundle in a monthly subscription price? so that we can extend your cash flow. First of all, let's talk about what we're doing today with Dell provisioning for Workspace ONE. So what this chart is trying to show you is basically that we can take your core apps, which are the bulk of your payload, you know, the amount of things that we send down to the device remotely, they represent the largest amount of data that we send, right? And so rather than have your end users working on the scenarios where they're waiting for the apps to download while they're sitting at their desk, we can add those apps in the factory and represent your core apps, send those out to the end users and have that device pre-provisioned with all those heavy loaded apps, right? So what we're showing here is from your Workspace ONE UEM console as the admin, you select those applications that you want installed in the devices in the factory before we send to the end users. Um, and you do that by defining the apps, you check them, you literally click them, check them, and it generates a PPKG. Imagine that being sort of a rolled up one single file of all the applications. Um, and then an XML that defines things like, how do you want domain join to behave? Um, are there some be questions you don't want to have to ask the users like what language etc cetera, etc cetera. so all these things control the experience those files are sent to to dell in a secured way in a secured location and then we use that specification and definition to install those applications and pre-plumb that behavior for that first boot experience and send that out to the end user a really really good way of getting you getting your end users to quick fruition. What happens at the end user side of the desk is that they do all the requisite things like the enrollment happens, the domain join actually occurs, but it's defined as I mentioned in the XML. And then all the other things like user installed apps, they may wanna install their own browser, maybe they are a Firefox fan, uh, BitLocker, et cetera. So that all happens after the fact, but the heavy load, which would have taken a long time is done in the factory. So coming soon, and in certain situations, we've piloted this already, so connected provision. So this is kind of the follow on, right? If you want to apply apps and policy, like security policy, or turn on BitLocker and have it pre-encrypt, set some bio settings, do all the enrollment, do OS patches, et cetera, we can do that in the burn rack. So the difference here is that rather than send us a PPKG and an XML um, from Workspace ONE, we simply, in Workspace ONE, define a payload, and that means apps plus everything else, policy, et cetera, to that device. And when that device is put into the burn rack, it's in a special second touch facility that has internet facing connectivity directly and only in a secured way to Workspace ONE UEM. And so that tenant then pushes down the apps and pushes down the policy and that device is fully configured from end to end and then sent to the end user and the end user has nothing to wait for. Um, they're literally logging in and using the device. So uh, some, some situations that sort of pre-provisioning of security policy is a good thing so that we can sort of ensure that that device is already secured when the end user first logs in. That's the fundamental difference of connected provisioning. The other 
one thing to call out too is that everything is dynamic in this scenario rather than change app stacks send us a ppkg with the previous offer this one the admin basically says i have three apps now i want to take one away and i want to add a new one so or maybe i want to add two new ones now i've got four apps but minus one old one all of that dynamic change is automatically populated down to the device in the burn rack so the very next device that's put in the burn rack for that particular customer the admin in changes policy on the fly and that next device gets that policy and, that, and those new apps so you as the admin control that experience in a very dynamic way you don't have to send us a file and wait for the for us to test that definition and make sure that it's good it's automatic and instantaneous so in summary what is connected provisioning it's taking a dell generic image by generic image i mean no extra software is installed it is a very base image clean um, and the driver payload for that particular type of device is also added. We add that with TechDirect's UEM registration via connective provisioning portal. So this is where you do sort of order management and say, I want to apply a particular profile because you can have multiple profiles. You could have an engineering and accounting profile. And that's how these devices are going to go down that profile. And when they get put in the burn rack, they're going to be prescribed installation apps etc per that particular profile um, and also you get a pizza tracker types interface where you know where that device is where where is it in the factory process and then that device is sitting in the second touch burn rack i mentioned that earlier it's a secure internet connection directly to the uh, uem tenant and then ultimately the it connects to the customer's uem tenant and then that equals a provision device that's ready to send directly to an end user. All right, I'm going to switch gears on you now and talk a little bit up the level, up a stack a little bit here is talk about modern workforce solutions. So what we're saying here, this is the solution of the that supports the full end to end life cycle of a device, right? So we're talking about a unified management strategy, basically taking care of this device, but also other devices like mobile, tablets, et cetera, other OSs, other OEMs, um, and doing that and supporting that in a zero touch deployment method. We talked about that earlier where we were talking about the provisioning methods, the IT not having to put hands on the device, basically specifying how it wants to be, how we want the factory to deploy that device or provision it and then send it to the end user. IT's got, you know, nothing to deal with it other than ensure that the device is compliant once it's online. Supporting a comprehensive security mechanism. At Dell, we support above the OS with things like Carbon Black and then below the OS with like Dell Trusted Device where we can check to ensure your BIOS has not been messed with, there is no malware on it, et cetera. And then providing an insights driven support mechanism. And what I mean by that is being able to take information, data, telemetry, and correlating that information such that we can provide meaningful insights into what's going on in my environment. But then additionally, when I find problems, let's remediate those automatically so that IT is not working on that remediation in a manual sense, but instead are looking for the things that remediation didn't work on, what I call the exceptions to the process which should be met much fewer devices to deal with. All right, so we're gonna move into some automation examples. And what we're gonna start with is really this chart showing you how Workspace ONE intelligence can be that facilitator, that platform for telling you what's going on, but not, also, not only that, automating and providing remediation. So if you read this left to right, we're talking about the Dell Trust Network Partners, these are all, I'm sorry, VMware Trust Network Partners, these are all network vendors in the security space that can provide data directly into Workspace ONE Intelligence, right? Um, but up, up the top here where I have my cursor, endpoint sensors, so we can have um, OS-derived information in a sort of um, custom way. I can write a PowerShell, basically. And anything I can write a PowerShell and extract data can be an input into Workspace ONE Intelligence. 
Um, then we've got canned analytics that come directly out of Workspace ONE UEM, the management side of things, uh, analytics from Workspace ONE Access. So the identity broker, we can check a bunch of interesting things. Um, for example, um, am I connecting from China and New York at the same time? Hmm, that's probably impossible. I can't be in two places at once, um, unless I'm, you know, Doctor Strange from Marvel Comics. <laughs> but that's the kind of thing we're looking for, and we can do things. Um, app analytics. So for mobile devices, for example, we can um, inject an intelligence SDK so that we can derive really, really deep level inspection data of the mobile device or mobile app. But we can also gather app information directly from um, PC or Windows based devices as well. Um, and in that scenario, we're looking at things like does this app call us blue screens? Do we have load time problems, et cetera, et cetera. And then lastly, common vulnerabilities, right? So this is a CVE feed, common vulnerabilities and exposures. Um, this particular informa set of information is, are there hot fixes for that device? Um, and there's a category system applied to those CVEs. So if something's super high category, we probably care about it. But now, as I tell you, these are all inputs and they're all from disparate areas, different sections of, or different parts of data. But once we get all that data and we put them into the intelligence platform, now we can do things like aggregate that information and then correlate it. Is there a problem with a CV feed plus a high CPU scenario or high network utilization? Well, maybe something is happening. Um, some malware is connecting back to a nefarious site and sending bad data or, or sending data in general that it should be, right? So we can do an A plus B plus C scenario to determine, hey, this is probably a bad thing, whereas maybe one thing by itself is, is not a good thing, but not necessarily a catastrophic thing. So that correlation is something that we're able to do. And then lastly, we can build dashboards um, with widgets that will show us this data in a visual way so that we can see things across the enterprise and determine whether we've got issues. And once we get those, I always say, so what? Okay, so I've got two devices that do not have BitLocker on. What do I do? Do I have to go to those devices and fix that manually? Well, no, we can build automated remediation workflows directly from those. So when we see two devices in that widget that do not have BitLocker, for example, then I can automate that and say, go push a Workspace ONE profile that enables BitLocker onto that device. For whatever reason, it may be a new device, never had it turned on, or some end users figured out a way to turn it off. And that's not a good thing because it's not compliant. We need to turn it back on in an immediate sense. Um, and then after that, when we do those remediations, we may want to um, notify. So there's a ton of notification connections built into the platform. Um, we can send Slack messages, open ServiceNow tickets, um, page folks, or send data to other alternative dashboard systems like Splunk, for example. And we'll show some show an example um, in the coming slides about what I'm talking about here. So understand this is not prescriptive. This is, again, the art of the possibility. And this is a flexible platform. And you can add, remove elements from my examples. All right, so we're going to show you an example here just to kind of get your mind around what I'm talking about here. What we did was we took a lot of different problem sets, what I call outcomes, and we distilled them into three themes. In the interest of time, we won't show you all the themes, but imagine the themes are PC compliance, which is what we're going to walk through to give you an example of what I'm talking about. Um, security posture, so much more security focused about the device. Um, and all the different attributes that entail a good posture. And then think about application compliance, right? Do you want to know how many people are using X, Y, or Z apps? Are you moving from Teams to Zoom, for example, or, or WebEx? And do we need to, or vice versa? And do we need to sort of track that trend? Are we declining on one app that we're sunsetting and increasing in terms of numbers of devices on another app? Well, those are the kinds of things that we can track. So um, let's go through one of these examples, PC compliance. So in this scenario, and this is going to read again left to right, what I'm showing you is a real world example where first we must identify the data that we want to sort of correlate and aggregate. So what I'm showing here is 
imagine we're looking for things like what's the status of the BIOS? Um, are there, is firewall turned on? Is BitLocker turned on? If any one of these things is not on or all of them are off, that's a bad thing. That's what the X represents. And then I'm continuing to aggregate disparate data, right? And what I mean by that is data from multiple sources. So as I move down here, my cursor, I've got a set of Dell IP, which we'll talk a little bit about, um, where I'm able to gather and extract value from Dell software that's running on the device. For example, Safe BIOS, which is part of the trusted device paradigm, is that is a product that will do an off-host verification uh, to determine whether there's any malware injected into your into your BIOS, right? So we may want to check that because it's part of the ecosystem of compliance. Dell Optimizer um, has a variety of optimized routines, everything from networking to video to audio. And for example, you may want audio enhancements turned on on everybody's device. So I can push a policy to make Optimizer be there and then turn on various components so that that machine is compliant for a end user's best experience. And then lastly, Dell client command. So I may run Dell command update and it's, and it's a compliance requirement that all the firmware and BIOS be updated. So I can send that policy, for example, but I can also check to see that that's there as an application, but then also determine whether it's actually doing its job and updating BIOS and firmware. And we've talked about CVE feeds and then Windows OS information. If we gather all these different pieces of information, what do we do with that, right? So at that point, we can assess that information when we start building dashboards. So we can track each one of these things as individual items and look at them across the enterprise and hopefully show that we have a near zero number of devices that are outside of the compliance requirements. And if they aren't, compliant, then let's automatically remediate that. And that's what I'm showing on the right is I may institute Dell client command. Remember I mentioned Dell command update. I may require it to update the device automatically. I may trigger service now tickets and also close them when the problem's fixed. Uh, I may ask UEM to go and quarantine device until it's back into compliance. I can restrict different accesses. Maybe I do not allow it to connect to the network or I revoke the Wi-Fi certificates, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of ways you can do things in that scenario. And then if they keep making this machine uncompliant, I may require them to enroll in a compliance training. And I send them an email with the URL with the required enrollment compliance. Let's click down into what a dashboard might look like. So again, this is not prescriptive, but these are examples of what I might want to do. In this scenario, I am checking for uh, BIOS verification because it's, it's a required application. I want it to be there. How many devices across my fleet don't have it? In this example, I have five devices. Um, all the way to is BitLocker not running and it's not encrypting the device. In this case, I have two. So if I'm doing my job and I'm pushing these profiles and these policies, I should see these at near zero across the enterprise. When, when I get a number in the positive value, for example, BitLocker not encrypted and I have two devices, then I can automatically trigger remediation against this particular widget and say, go fix that. And if that fixing doesn't work, then I've got two devices across my entire enterprise that I can focus on dealing with the problem. In the old way, I'd have to go to all the devices that don't have BitLocker there could be hundreds and I'd have to manually fix those or figure out why the device doesn't have BitLocker turned on. And that is a very big chore. And then this example shows you other informations. I may have a strategy of only having one current OS minus two OSs back and anything outside of that realm is a non-compliant device. It hasn't had an upgrade for Windows for whatever reason. And so I'm showing, you know, how many different OSs I have out there. And if anything is outside of that realm, I may trigger an OS update. I can look at security fixes and hot fixes available for devices. I can really just add an inlet, unlimited number of things here that are sort of important to the compliance of my enterprise and trigger those remediations. So let's look at what those remediations might look like. 
Um, this follows a very much IFTT if then then this type engine. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, for example, here, biosecure boot equals false. So it's not turned on. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to tell Workspace One UEM, the PC management side of things, go fix that. Go push this policy to turn on BIOS secure boot. Use Dell command monitor to make that BIOS change, right? We're going to talk about some of those integrated pieces in a second. And then open an incident with ServiceNow. And then lastly, send an email to the end user letting them know, hey, we're making a BIOS change and it may require a reboot, FYI. And that's the kind of thing also, by the way, we can control what the end user deals with in terms of do they have to reboot immediately? Do they have some grace period or can they defer it for X number of times? We can control that process in the admin. And some other things here, examples is, for example, turn on BitLocker policy, right? We find it that it's not on, then send a, a, a policy to Workspace ONE to say, hey, go turn that on, fix it, go turn secure boot on. All right, well, hopefully I give you a little bit of examples of what I'm talking about when I say outcomes. So let's go through quickly uh, some Dell differentiated, Dell injected technology within Workspace ONE. So the first one is BIOS verification. I've mentioned that earlier, but I want to show you what that looks like. So a very small um, app that runs an API that checks your BIOS checksum, if you may, against an off-host checksum. And basically, we're able to determine whether that BIOS is, is good or somehow has been altered. And that can mean corruption or malware injected, something nefarious or something accidental. But bottom line is your BIOS is not good. And so this is showing an example in device details. When that application is loaded there, it'll run that, that quick little utility to, to determine whether everything is good. And in this case, we got a green check by BIOS verification for this device. It means all is well. If we see something other than that green check, then something is wrong. Then we can create reports that let the admin know we've got a problem. Dell OEM updates. So what this does is control the Dell command update utility that would be running on the device. It's not running perpetually. It's not an agent, but basically it can fire up when it needs to. Um, and this is how we control the policy of when we want to go do a scan to determine whether there are new updates available and control the kind of um, update that we care about. For example, urgent updates only. We could, we could set that to enable and turn everything else off. Um, whether we care about software or hardware drivers or only BIOS updates, which is what we're showing here where the cursor is, we can control that full experience. And then the top screenshot showing you what a device detail looks like in that scenario. And lastly, BIOS integrations. So um, what I mean by this is I can actually make BIOS changes. I can set virtualization on. This shows you a screenshot of Dell policies that can be created around Dell Command Monitor. Dell Command Monitor is automatically installed if a Dell profile is set. So if I go to BIOS in the profiles, you see these little Dell icons that shows this is Dell only um, functionality. I can set virtualization on and it will basically push that to the Dell BIOS on the device. I can also set passwords. So we escrow those passwords. And so we do full BIOS password management in a very secured way. We can auto generate a secured BIOS password that is that's really hard to guess kind of scenario. I, I, I call it semi obfuscated. And then we can also extract information that we can show on device details. So we have a lot of feature functionality here. All right, so to book in this presentation here, I mentioned earlier, well, all this stuff is great. How do I consume it as a service? And so to that end, I'm gonna talk to you and end with Dell PC as a service. What can we deliver? So. First of all, I mentioned that modern end user experience. So we can basically ensure that you have up-to-date high performing technology with personalized refresh rates. So ensuring that when you want to update those devices, you are in control of that, right? Hardware with built-in AI that learns and adapts to create a smarter, more personalized user experience. And then lastly, we can plan in advance for a sustainable asset recovery at the end of the PC's life and help transition end users into new technology. They get PCs faster, 
and they're more refreshed and it makes them ultimately happier. You know, it's kind of like uh, getting a Christmas present on the tree. You've got a new PC. It sort of makes life easier. It makes them feel um, like they're cared for. Um, and then moving into IT efficiency with lower costs. We're going to talk about what this is. We've got an extra slide that talks about how we can help you reduce your life cycle costs by 20%. And by life cycle costs, I mean that tip to tail from provisioning to basically getting rid of the device and getting a new device in the end user's hands. But we can we can help you with pro deploy client suite. So that's how we start the provisioning process. We can get you running, get your end users running in minutes instead of days and give you day one productivity. So the end user's not sitting there with their laptop waiting for it to download things and provision. Now, boom, they're ready to do work on that first day. Um, and then we had talked about endpoint security, but we have the most comprehensive approach to endpoint security with the industry's most secure commercial PC. And what I mean by that is we're dealing with the security aspect from above the OS and then below the OS. Remember I mentioned Dell trusted device and BIOS verification. We're checking this device from tip to tail and securing it. And then lastly, Dell Pro support suite for PCs um, is our ability to sort of maintain control and take action with insights so we can provide a lot of insights about the device and the health and the use of those end users and their devices right and when you have problems you have a place to phone a home, phone a friend and get that device fixed repaired replaced etc and why mention that as a service consumption model well this is that part that predictable monthly pricing affordability that provides better cash flow, um, no upfront investment required with predictable payments, spread over time, and a term that works for your business and budgets. So you have more control over how much you're spending a month on these devices rather than paying upfront for a whole set of devices, you're paying a portion of that use. Um, and you don't have to deal with ownership or disposable work burden. We're gonna take care of all that from a device perspective. And then, Lastly, rather than buy a whole bunch of devices in prediction for uh, in your budget cycles in prediction for I'm going to have, you know, 100 more employees in the next three months, you have the flexibility to scale up based on your base business needs on a monthly scenario, right? So don't pre buy those devices. Um, you can scale as you require. All right, so here's our last slide and we're going to talk about that 20% reduction, I'm gonna hopefully expand that out a little bit. But in a Forrester, Forrester consulting study, we found in an organization of 4,000 users that using PC as service, we saw a 20% reduction in life cycle service costs. PC as service led to a reduction in costs in areas like procurement services, imaging, physical installation, final prep, migration, system management, support, asset disposition, and retirement. So the full tip to tail life cycle of a device, um, we're able to help you reduce in all of those areas. Employees benefited by receiving devices that are on average two years newer, which drives employee experience benefits while also reducing the associated costs of the life cycle of that device. And then lastly, deployment time and support ticket resolution times. So as users are using newer devices, the hardware is newer, it's not probably gonna fail. It's not a six, seven, eight year new old device. We're hopefully gonna be running on devices that are running smoothly and well and well managed, et cetera. So we're gonna reduce the opportunity for end users to be dissatisfied and open support tickets. So that is how we can help you with Dell PC service. We can add on to the hardware, all of the requisite software to manage the device like workspace one workspace one intelligence security like carbon black and then the device and roll that all up into a monthly cost that per device and per user that makes it easier for you to consume and gives you ultimate flexibility thank you for your time again my name was gus chavira and i hope and appreciate that you took the time to watch this have a good day